humans are social animals. It is with the power of group and cooperation that we survived, thrived, and became the dominant species on this planet. Unlike other social animals such as lions or walruses, individual human adult is physically much weaker. Although I would say our best weapon is our brains and tools, we still cannot directly confront bears or other top predators. Therefore, to be and stay in a group is essential to our survival. To be in a group certainly helped us to better survive against environment and other species. But inevitably, we're gonna have to face the competition within the group. Some individuals, for various reasons and factors, will have more resources, more power, and to be more respected. While some other individuals might have less materialistic accumulations, less attractive body, and to be less liked by other people. Yet, no matter where you locate on the social ranking or within the group, every single individual is equally driven, or in other words, programmed, to preserve themselves and maximally reproduce. However, we cannot deny that the environment and the survival challenges for individuals who are high in social ranking are different than those who are on the lower end of it. Individuals who are high in social ranking, for instance, uh, the general of the army, CEOs, lawyer, or the presidents concern more about maintaining their social power and social position. However, individuals who are lower on the social ranking system have more concerns about their primary needs. They have less resources, they have less chance to mate. In some situation, they might be excluded from the group, which is the ultimate survival disaster. Those individuals have to pay more attention on the social dynamics and interpersonal connections, because essentially, the higher ranking individual can influence and sometimes determine the fate of those who are on the lower end of the social hierarchy. The interpretation of how other people think of them is essential for their survival. And we can see this in various situations. For instance, in ancient time, the slaves uh, or the newbies to a big international corporation. However, I think the most interesting and direct example is in the martial arts. So for instance, if you are just a beginner, you are white belt in Jiu-Jitsu, you better be respectful to higher belts because they really can kill you if they wanted to. As for a beginner, you have no technique as well as no physical power to defend against the attack from a higher belt. So in this case, it is survivally essential that you don't piss off some higher belts. Not only that, you would want to maintain a healthy and a smooth interpersonal relationship with the higher belts because not only just to protect yourself, but if they're happy and they like you, they're willing to teach you something and they're willing to train with you and you can improve much, much faster. So in this case, as a beginner, as a white belt, as an individual who is on the lowest end of the social ranking, to maintain a smooth social dynamics with other people is very, very important. On the contrary, for those who are high in the ranking, for those who say are brown belt or black belt, they can, and I believe most of the trainers, they are very, very nice, but essentially they do not need to pay so much attention on the social dynamics. So when we look at the modern diagnostic criteria for social anxiety, we can see something very, very interesting. From DSM-5, we can see that the core feature is the excessive fear of being negatively evaluated and the fear to exhibit anxiety symptoms. The fear of judgment, as we just talked about, is very much related to low social ranking. The lower in the ranking we are, more impacts those judgments have on us. The exhibition of fear in social interaction is also related to low dominance and submissiveness. Therefore, we can see that both of the core features of social anxiety are intimately related to the social ranking as well as the fear of lowered social ranking. So, is social anxiety connected to the social ranking system that we just talked about? Or in other words, can social anxiety be explained in terms of evolutionary psychology? Well, luckily, various psychologists have digged into this topic. 
For instance, in this paper, they found out that patients with social anxiety disorder, in comparison with healthy control participants, reported a significantly increased level of fear and avoidance of eye contacts. In most of the cultures, I would say, the direct contact of eye is a very emotional behavior. It is typically associated with romance and challenging behaviors. I challenge you guys to go on the street and stare someone in the eye as they walk towards you and see how uncomfortable it feels. Most of the time, we don't feel so good and comfortable maintaining such an intense uh, eye contact with another person. And generally, the person who moves their eyes away first is more submissive than the other one. And the other thing is the acoustic differences. In this paper, we can see that lower pitch and loud voices are associated with dominance in both men and women. It is suggested that individuals use different sounds to make themselves sound larger or smaller than they truly are. And it is stated that socially anxious individuals exhibit an enhanced use of vocal strategies associated with de-escalation of conflicts. So from this paper, we can see that socially anxious individual typically employs acoustic features that are associated with low dominance. Also, body posture gives away a lot of information about dominance and submissiveness. Well, firstly, I would say all of us have this pre-programmed programs uh, inside of us to detect those subtle informations in expressions as well as in postures. To tilt the pelvis forward is essentially the same as when a dog trying to hide his tail between his legs. This is a typical submissive behaviors. In bioenergetic, it is called whipped dog posture. And there are many, many fascinating uh, mechanism related to our posture and our emotionality. The other thing is the social dynamics for socially anxious individuals. It is shown that high socially anxious individuals are related to greater efforts to maintain social harmony, which is related to the Jujutsu example I just mentioned. Generally, socially anxious individuals fear conflicts and fear confrontation. And this has multiple functions or multiple reasons for that. Firstly, is that they might fail in the competition, either in mating or competing for the same position. The failure in competition, well, firstly, it's hard to take as, as an individual. And more importantly, those failures would further endanger their already low social ranking. And the most interesting thing is that all those competition and conflicts and aggression essentially are very much related to the testosterone level. And testosterone level is intimately connected to social hierarchy and dominance. And lastly, in this wonderful paper, Dr. Gilbert maintained that highly socially anxious individuals are those who perceive themselves as inferior to other people. So with all those empirical evidence listed above, I think we can say that social anxiety is essentially a meaningful survival strategy for individuals that are on the lower end of social dominance hierarchy or the social ranking. When we become the lower ranking individuals, we will naturally become sensitive to other people's opinion because other people's opinion are crucially important to their survival. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you find it interesting. At least I find it fascinating when I read this paper and when I was trying to organize those informations. Anyway, if you like my video, please sub, share, and like, and I will see you in my next video.